thousands of archaeologists from all over the world demand justice. Archaeologists want to take advantage of the situation in the world and try to return ancient artifacts to the places where they were discovered. In this video, you will learn about the unique finds that did not go unnoticed. In addition to gold coins, we will also study women's pennies. Hi friend, you're on the Kurtop channel. Traces of Opium 3500 years old a sensational statement was made by archaeologists in Israel. Bronze Age people who lived in the Levant took psychoactive substances. In 2017, during excavations in the tombs of Tal Yehud, archaeologists unearthed pottery, but analyses were carried out only this year. The study of such excavations is very similar to a forensic medical examination at a crime scene. The analysis of 22 clay objects took place on equipment used by the police. People who took opium in the Bronze Age would never have thought they would be studied by cops from the 21st century. Analyses of gas chromatography and mass spectrometry carried out as part of the study showed that eight vessels contained opium alkaloids obtained from the poppy plant. The jars contained morphinin, which is derived from morphine, as well as opianic acid and the other compounds in the chemical signature of opium. Based on this, we can conclude that the ancient Canaanites were familiar with the psychoactive properties of the poppy. The ancient Egyptians could use opium as an offering to the underworld, or priests used it to evoke the spirits of dead relatives. Back in the 1960s, for the first time, experts suggested that such jugs were used to make opium. Their long necks resembled an inverted poppy head. The first written mention of opium was on 3,000-year-old Sumerian clay tablets, where the drug is referred to as gil, which means happiness. This is not the first find confirming that people used drugs in ancient times. Archaeologists have repeatedly found traces of marijuana, which was most likely used for religious rituals. Golden Coins Hidden in the Wall In the wall of the natural reserve of the Golan Heights, archaeologists have discovered a treasure trove of gold coins. What is unique about this find, you may ask? I will tell you. It's the fact that this territory during the Six-Day War in 1967 was annexed by Israel from Syria. These coins may shed light on ancient Muslim conquests in the region. 44 pure gold coins were found. All coins had images of the emperors Phocas and Heraclius. The wall was built in 635 AD. In this year, the Muslims took control of this territory, although earlier there was a Christian settlement here. The Byzantine Empire, the eastern part of the Roman Empire, was in fact the longest-running medieval empire, lasting over 1,000 years. The place where the coins were found, known in the Christian world as Benaya, it was significant because it was supposedly here that Jesus said to Peter, Upon this rock, I will build my church. Coins confirm the fact that numerous military conflicts took place in this territory. The territory was important for Christians, Jews, and Muslims alike. In 410 AD, after the fall of Rome and the invasion of the barbarians, the Byzantine Empire began to flourish. We are unlikely to be able to find out who the owner of the gold coins was and why he hid them them in the wall. But perhaps we will be able to restore the historical justice that thousands of archaeologists around the world are striving for. Thousands of archaeologists demand justice. Egyptian Prime Minister Mustafa Madbouli and archaeologists are trying to get the Rosetta Stone and 16 other artifacts back to Egypt. I fully support them, because the history of ancient Egypt must belong to modern Egypt. The Prime Minister believes that the artifacts were taken out of the country in an illegal and unethical way. He created a petition that has already collected more than 2,500 signatures. Previously, the Egyptian government asked the UK to return the artifacts to their homeland, but now they are already demanding it. 
Mustafa Madbouli claims that the Rosetta Stone and other artifacts will be repatriated. It's only a matter of time. As you can see, global events are taking place even in the world of archaeology, which could not even be thought of before. The Rosetta Stone was discovered in 1799, a year after Napoleon's invasion of Egypt, by a French officer supervising excavations in the city of Rashid in the Nile Delta. The stone contained texts in three different languages, Greek, Demo and Egyptian hieroglyphs. The object was seen as a cross-cultural translation key that could provide unparalleled insight into ancient civilizations. The text of the petition is as follows. The confiscation of the Rosetta Stone, among other artifacts, is an act of encroachment on Egyptian cultural values and identity and is a direct result of the cultural colonial violence against the Egyptian cultural heritage. History cannot be changed, but it can be corrected, and although the political, military and state rule of the British Empire left Egypt many years ago, cultural colonization has not yet ended. Interestingly, Egypt is not the only country that requires the UK to return their artifacts, so Greece demands the return of the Parthenon marble to its homeland. But current British Prime Minister Liz Truss does not support the wishes of archaeologists from around the world. After all, she is well aware that the popularity of British museums will decrease significantly. Have you ever thought about the fact that the ruler of the state was a man without a face? And even this has already happened in our history. The King Without a Face No matter what anyone says, being a king is not an easy job. Especially if you are the king of Jerusalem and your country is constantly besieged by Muslims. And your main enemy is the strongest ruler of those times, Saladin. And what if we add to this the terrible disease of leprosy, which does not allow to live normally? This is the suffering that few people could cope with, but the hero of our video accepted all these challenges. Modern historians admire him for his willpower and devotion to the country. King without a face, leper king. All this is King Baldwin IV. An interesting fact is that scientists have finally found out which disease was the very first in the history of mankind. The oldest disease that is also mentioned in the Bible was leprosy, and now it is completely curable, even though it was different before. At one time, it was considered a curse for sins, at another time, divine grace. People have had leprosy since the time of migration from Africa to Europe. Let's get back to the king. With his main enemy, Sultan Saladin, Baldwin had to face in the first year of his reign. The 13-year-old king successfully attacked Damascus, which forced Saladin to get out of Aleppo. Two years later, the opponents clashed in the battles of Fort Damascus and Anduha. The army of Saladin outnumbered the troops of the Kingdom of Jerusalem by several times. In addition, Baldwin could hold the horse's reins with only one hand. But this did not prevent the king from crushingly defeating his opponent in 1177 at the Battle of Montgazard. The stunned Saladin in his hearts said to his associates, as long as this boy is in Jerusalem, the city will not fall. Baldwin at that time was only 16 years old. The opponent had to negotiate peace. At the age of 24, Baldwin could no longer walk without support. Due to the inability to blink, his cornea dried up and he became blind. Plus, he survived a very dangerous fever that aggravated the disease. Realizing the approach of death, Baldwin appointed his six-year-old nephew as his heir. In fact, King Baldwin IV never wore a mask as shown in various films. Yes, his face was indeed disfigured by leprosy, but until the last day of his life, he continued to lead the state and fight off the army of Saladin. Saladin took the city two years after Baldwin's death. The history of the Kingdom of Jerusalem ended. But the history of ancient Egypt did not end, which I will tell you about later. Cave of the Time of Ramesses II it rarely happens when archaeologists manage to touch places that had not been touched for thousands of years. 
This time in the Palmakim National Park in Israel, a group of researchers discovered an ancient burial. While working, the excavator collapsed the roof of the burial cave, inside which dozens of artifacts from the time of Pharaoh Ramesses II were found. The last time they were people, 3,300 years ago. Archaeologists have found dozens of fragments of pottery and bronze utensils, jugs and bowls of various shapes. Some vessels contain precious substances. In addition to dishes, they managed to find weapons of war in the form of spears and arrowheads. All this was to serve the dead in the afterlife. According to archaeologists, such a find happens once in a lifetime. These are not Indiana Jones movies. This is real life, a real tomb straight from the ancient world. It's a time capsule. These vessels and weapons have not been touched by human hands for more than 3,300 years. Usually warriors were buried with weapons in those days. The burial chamber was manually carved into the rock in the shape of a square. Perhaps it was the burial place of an entire family or clan. Unfortunately, the preservation of the remains was so terrible that it would not even be possible for scientists to extract DNA for analysis. But scientists will be able to explore the ancient cosmetics and women's pen that were discovered in London. Jar of Cream and Worn Women's Panties in Tabat Square in London, archaeologists have found an eye-catching set of artifacts. A jar of cream and women's panties lay at the bottom of the ditch. It would seem nothing unusual. After all, any girl could drop this from her handbag. But the girl dropped this set not yesterday, not last year, and not even 100 years ago. These artifacts are over 2,000 years old. In 120-150 AD, this place was a small ancient Roman town Londonium, and now this place is a huge modern metropolis. Archaeologists immediately opened the jar and saw in it a white cream with a fingerprint, as if this cream had been used yesterday. After analyzing the contents, it was possible to find out the composition. It was animal fat, starch, and tin, and there are no smells of lavender or chocolate. 2,000 years ago, a similar cream was used as a moisturizer for the skin of the face and hands. It is very interesting what brand of cosmetics the ancient Roman lady used at that time. But the second find is even more interesting. These are women's panties, which are very similar to modern bikinis or thongs. It's hard to believe that more than 2,000 years ago, ladies preferred such underwear. This set was found in 1953 at the bottom of an ancient well. As I said earlier, their age is 1st AD. Most likely, one of you is very familiar with the history of ancient Rome and knows very well that in those days no one wore underwear. And he will be right. Such underwear was not used for every day. In it, the girls performed various gymnastic exercises. This is confirmed by the mosaic at the Villa Romana del Casal in Sicily, 4th century AD. To perform complex acrobatic stunts, the girls needed at least minimal clothing. In addition to performances, women in ancient Rome used such pennies in a special period, putting pieces of folded fabric or wool inside. Here is another example of the ancient Roman mosaic, Fight of the Gladiators, from the Villa Borghese, Rome, 3rd century AD. Have you ever wondered what sounds were in Rome on the battlefield? Sounds of a Roman battlefield the mouthpiece of an ancient Roman horn was found in an ancient Roman fort of Vindelanda. The metal horn was a musical instrument used to convey orders to troops during combat. No fewer than nine Roman forts were built of wood or stone in Vindelanda from about 85 to 370 AD, creating one of the most complex archaeological sites in Britain and a unique cultural heritage of frontier life. Today, Wendelanda is an active archaeological site, where excavations have previously unearthed thousands of perfectly preserved shoes, textiles, woodwork, and Wendelanda tablets, the oldest surviving documents in Britain dating from the 1st and 2nd centuries AD. Researchers were excavating the floor of Hadrian's workshop buried under the remains of a Scola, officer's club, when they discovered a rare copper alloy mouthpiece dating from around 120-128 AD. Barbara Burley, curator and the Vindelanda Trust, said, When you find a piece of musical instrument, it helps us get a better idea of not only what the army looked like, but how it sounded. And now we will go to China and see what the funeral suits look like. Burial Costumes of the Han Dynasty 
In ancient times in China, high-ranking people were buried in unique suits that made of jade plates fastened with gold wire. The cold and smooth plates created an incredibly beautiful mosaic that symbolized the wealth of the Han Dynasty. Similar burials except China were not seen anywhere else. In Chinese, they are called pinyin, meaning jade suit. For centuries, people thought jade burial suits were just a legend. People could not even imagine that the rulers in those days could be so rich as to completely cover their bodies with incredibly expensive jade. But the discovery in 1986 confirmed that these were not the legends described in the old texts. This discovery became a sensation not only for China, but for the whole world. Finally, archaeologists were able to confirm that the rulers of the Han Dynasty were buried in jade suits. The Han Dynasty was extremely powerful and ruled from 206 BC to 220 AD. This is one of the most iconic Chinese dynasties. The Han remain the main ethnic group in China today. The tombs of the Han Dynasty rulers changed the idea of Chinese burial practices. In 1983, in Dinshan, Hebei province, researchers discovered one of the most expensive jade suits in history, which belonged to the ruler of Huai. The costume is made of 1,203 pieces of jade connected with gold threads, the total weight of which is 2,580 grams. The most complex costume consisted of 2,498 pieces of jade. Mosaics on the Sea of Galilee And we will return to Israel again, where archaeologists have discovered floor mosaics on the shores of the Sea of Galilee. This indicates that this place was a prosperous region in ancient times, inhabited by early Christian Jewish communities, and later it became an important Islamic administrative center. Once this place was an important trade center centered around the production of sugar, and the son of the caliph ordered the palace, which included one of the first mosques erected in the Palestine area. The area was hit by a massive earthquake around 749 AD and was later abandoned. Abandoned. Professor Kunin and his team have been conducting archaeological research in the area for the past decade, starting with excavations and restoration work at the Caliph's palace. Work was suspended during the pandemic, but this year the team continued excavation at the site. And I will continue to work on the channel and will delight you with new finds of archaeologists and interest in historical events. Leave your kind comments under the video, they really help in the development of the channel. Thanks for your views. Bye, everyone!